Hello and welcome to the second video from the Kawasaki channel. Today we're going to be carrying on from our first video by building a second item of essential equipment for working with valve amplifiers. That item is a capacitor discharger. In order to build the capacitor discharger we will need a few uh, bits and pieces. The first one is a plastic chopstick. The second is a resistor and this is a 10 watt 250 ohm resistor. The third item is some decent uh, mains capable cable, uh, wire and this particular wire is uh, 14 gauge silicon earth cable. We'll also need a small length of solid core wire uh, to make the probe tip and uh, this is uh, basically a piece of the earth cable from a household installation it's basically solid copper core uh, sorry solid copper wire then we're going to need something to attach the uh, capacitor discharger to the chassis uh, now you can either go straight to a crocodile clip or what i propose to do is go to a four millimeter banana plug and then you can attach your large crocodile uh, clip or a smaller one to the end of it. Finally, a couple of tie wraps and an assortment of uh, heat shrink. To power capacitors in an amplifier, especially a valve amplifier, can hold a lethal charge. They are there to smooth out the voltage within the amplifier and to avoid sudden transients using up any reserves of current and causing audible issues. Any amplifier I design has a leak resistor which will discharge the capacitors over the space of a few minutes but it is not uncommon for manufacturers to leave out this extra cost and without it capacitors could still be holding a lethal charge days later. The only way to be sure your amplifier is safe to work on is to always have your capacitor discharger available and to use it. We discharge a capacitor by connecting its positive terminal through a controlled path to its ground which is not necessarily earth but could be. In simple terms you could just connect a suitable resistor to two jump leads then connect one of these to, to ground and the other to uh, positive on the capacitors. The problem with this is that we're just as likely to get electrocuted doing that as we are working on the amp without discharging it so that's where the discharger comes in. Now on to the build. I've started off by cutting a small notch into the uh, end of the chopstick. This is just to allow the solid core wire to come out in the middle of the chopstick. It's optional, but I did that using two cutting blades in a Dremel and then cut it, holding it in a vise and basically cutting uh, a small notch, just going down to about three quarters of an, well, maybe a couple of uh, centimeters uh, down the shaft. So first of all, we're going to need to work out where everything's going on here. And uh, we're gonna have the copper wire coming down to about halfway where it's gonna join the conductor of the resistor, which is gonna be near the end. And then the wire will go on after that. So first of all, I'm going to attach the copper wire and the resistor together. You want to make sure this is a decent connection because obviously this is uh, where the uh, capacitor is going to discharge through. Okay, it's a good connection. And uh, then we're going to need to do the same to the silicon wire. So I'm just going to uh, do that as well. So what I've done is I've uh, wrapped that uh, spirally around the uh, conductor and now we're just going to uh, flood that with solder. Okay. 
Okay. So uh, now we have the solid core wire going through the resistor and uh, down the silicon wire uh, and that will attach to the uh, plug uh, shortly. What I'm going to do now is assemble the uh, probe itself. So uh, first of all I need to work out how much I, I want sticking out of the end. So that's going to be about a centimetre, half an inch, something like that. I'm going to slide the heat shrink tubing onto the tube, making sure that uh, the probe comes out in the right place. And to hold it, I'm going to use some, uh, some uh, heat shrink that just fits. Okay. That's on as far as it will go, so just remove a little bit of that and make sure that the main heat shrink covers it up so there's no, there's no visible gap, uh, in fact there's no gap, that's the, the idea. So that basically covers that part of it and now I'm going to use a couple of tie wraps to physically attach the uh, resistor to the uh, chopstick these are these need to go either side or you'll feel them through the uh, heat shrink and not be able to get the best uh, heat shrink on there so uh, the actual block part of the uh, tie wrap needs to go next to the resistor and we can snip off the uh, extra parts. Okay, so that's that part of it, and uh, I'm now going to heat shrink. Uh, I'm now going to heat up the heat shrink to uh, uh, make it uh, shrink. Okay, by using various. By using various pieces of uh, heat shrink, I was able to uh, have the copper core of the centre of the solid core wire coming out of the end, and it neatly reaching up the shaft to the uh, resistor. We then need to uh, cover the resistor using some larger heat shrink. And again, we may need to use a, a smaller, a middle-sized piece at each end in order to cover that up. So uh, I'll carry on and do that now. Okay, by switching sizes and by heat shrinking over joins, you can make it quite neat in the end. Um, I would have spent a little bit longer on it, but uh, that's now work covered uh, and I'm just going to cover the end so it joins onto the, uh, to the wire itself just for neatness. So uh, I'm going to use a piece that uh, covers the uh, silicon wire onto the end of the chopstick and then finally a piece that just about fits over the end.
I think one final piece on the end we'll get that uh, as neat as it's going to be okay so now the resistor is uh, attached to the chopstick the uh, insulator is completely covered in heat shrink there is a small tip at the end which uh, is visible and it then runs neatly into the uh, wire um, different banana plugs are attached in different ways um, so this will vary on the uh, one you've uh, selected um, but this particular one uh, is uh, actually for connecting speakers um, and uh, it simply go uh, it simply screws on and uh, grabs the cable Okay, we're now looking at my Marshall 2204 clone, uh, which I built recently. Uh, if you look in the background, you'll see my DC uh, voltage monitor, which is showing 296 and 308 volts for two for the two locations that are clipped to at the moment. Now. As I stated earlier, I always put bleed resistors in my amplifiers uh, and as such, if I now turn the, the mains voltage off, you'll see that those uh, voltages drop over about 10 seconds. And in fact, it probably only takes four to five seconds before the voltage is under 50 volts. What I'm now going to do is demonstrate the capacitor discharger by touching the capacitor positive side, which is the side that uh, you can see me pointing to now, the side that the voltage uh, clip goes to, um, just after turning it off. Uh, and see how much difference it makes. We see the voltage uh, rising. This is a diode rectified uh, amplifier, so it's uh, dramatically quicker at the voltage uh, rising. Okay, so we've now got uh, around about 300 and 308 volts uh, on the two locations. Now, if I turn it off, but immediately touch the positive side of one of the uh, capacitors. If you keep an eye on the DC monitor in the background, you'll see how much more quickly uh, the voltage goes away. And if I do that again, and this time touch the positive of the other capacitor, it should go down even quicker. As in the first instance, the top capacitor is actually recharging from the bottom one. And you can see that uh, that was quite dramatic. <laughs> 